Alan Dershowitz is a retired Harvard Law School professor. He's the author of The Case Against Impeaching Trump, and he joins us tonight. Professor, thanks a lot for coming on. So, Thank you. Ass assess from a legal perspective, if you would, Jerome Corsi's claim that he was allowed to amend his testimony to correct a mistake that he said was a result of him just forgetting, being 72 and forgetting the details, and then being threatened f with prosecution for lying using the first unamended transcript of the testimony. Does that pass the legal smell test? I don't think so. Uh, there's no law prohibiting somebody from being indicted for lying on the basis of the first lie. But in 55 years of practicing criminal law, I have never heard or read of any case where a person was allowed to amend his testimony and then corrected it and was then threatened with indictment right. for the unamended original alleged lie. That just seems utterly unprecedented if those facts are correct. So what would be the point of doing that? I mean, what's, what's actually going on here, do you think? Well, we know what's going on because Judge Ellis told us what's going on. That is, that is uh, and he was the judge in the Manafort case, that, that is the modus operandi of the special counsel is to get as many people as possible to commit perjury or to lie and then squeeze them uh, and use pressure on them to have them testify against the major targets of the investigation. And what Judge Ellis said appropriately is the risk of that is not only will some people sing, but they will compose, they will elaborate, they will tell the story right. even better because they know that the better the story, the better the deal. But having said that, I don't think that we're going to hear a criminal complaint being taken seriously by the uh, right. Justice Department against the special prosecutor. Uh, that's never happened in history, as far as I know. But uh, raising this as a defense, both as a legal defense and as a factual defense, I think has some uh, real credibility. So if the facts are as they say, as he says they are, I think he would have a very right. defensible case and would have a pretty good chance of winning and probably uh, would be wise not necessarily to capitulate to the threats of prosecution. Now, there may be more there. I, I don't know. And I'm not giving him legal advice. Right. But based on what you asked, that seems like a very weak case. Right. And that is his account of it. But if that's true, and adding that to everything else we know, is it possible that the prosecution, the special prosecutor, has lost sight of the point of this entire exercise, which is to protect the country from a, a hostile foreign power? Right. And I would put it a little differently. The, the special counsel was supposed to find crimes that already occurred before he became special counsel. That was his right. mandate, to find crimes relating to Russia. As far as we know, he hasn't found very many of those. What he's done is to help create crimes. That is, he's given people an opportunity to lie. Now, it's their fault if they lie. But these are all crimes yeah. that have occurred after he became special prosecutor. That wasn't his mandate. And the other crimes, most of the ones that he found before, are financial crimes, like with Manafort, utterly unrelated to his mandate. The one exception to that may be Cohen testifying about the hundred and something thousand dollar payment to uh, one of the women, but that's a very questionable case because you're allowed to make contributions to your own campaign, particularly if the purpose is to save you from embarrassment with family and friends and help your business brand. So that's going to be a very, very tough case to bring. We know that from the Edwards case. How common is this among prosecutors? This kind of behavior, roping, well, trying to you know, suborn someone common. into perjury. It's common when you're dealing with the mafia. It's common when you're dealing with terrorists. But good prosecutors don't try to manufacture crime. Uh, and good prosecutors don't necessarily use the threat of prosecution to create evidence that is used to target somebody who may not have committed any crime at all. So, right. you know, right. prosecutors do a lot of things, but good prosecutors, I think, don't do what allegedly is being done here. And I think that once the report comes out and once the president yep. has an opportunity through his legal team to respond to the report, maybe we'll see both sides of the issue, which up to now we haven't really seen. 
mafia and terrorists. Drum Corsi not in either category, of course. Professor, thank you very much. Great to see you.